You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Happy to have you with me here today on our first host call of the weekend. Our time to reach out to the community, answer all questions on wellness, weight loss, anti-aging, mentorship, mindset, you name it, we try to tackle it here on our weekend shows. Definitely some of my favorites are here on the weekend, but also just being able to understand what people are asking. I think it was about four or five shows ago, I mentioned that we have now answered over 2,000 questions on the Cabral House Call Weekend Podcast. And because of that, really, I mean, it's great for health practitioners too, because you get to see what people are asking. These are the issues that you're suffering from. And it gives me a really good insight into what you need more information on. So a lot of these questions go on to become the basis for individual podcasts Monday through Friday on the Cabral concept. But what we try to do is we always answer. We give a couple minutes for each question, try to answer the question as best we can, and give people the starting point, whether it's a lab, whether it's a nutritional supplement, whether it's foods, whether it's mindset, you know, whatever it is. I think I've answered, I can't say almost everything, but I've answered quite a bit here on the weekend house calls over those 2,000 questions. So today... I took a little perusal over the questions right before we got started, and there'll be a couple that I've already answered before. So what I'm going to do is just direct people back to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. And what I'd like you to do is just type in the search term that I give you from your question, and then you'll get that question answered in depth. And the reason I'm doing that is not to overlook your question. It's absolutely not that at all. I want to make sure you get the information you need and deserve. But right now, we're answering questions from May 30th. Uh, We'll be finishing out May's questions. And it is today just about what? It's uh, the 1st of September, I believe, 1st of September. So you know that's why we're exactly 12 weeks behind. So June, July, August, that's how far we're behind. So what I want to do is just make sure that I'm getting through the questions as quickly as possible. If I've already answered your question on your topic, I'm going to tell you which search term I should say to look for. And a lot of times I know that you probably already listened to it. And that's because you asked your question about 12 weeks ago and you might have already used the search bar and tuned back in. And the other thing is that you can always go to cabralsupportgroup.com. You know by now, I'm sure that that's our private Facebook group. That URL links you right over to that group where we answer at least at least a dozen to two dozen questions a day with my health coaching team, Laura and Caitlin and Julia and Michelle, amazing, amazing coaches and they're able to answer those questions for you. So hopefully that helps. And what I'd like to do right now is dive right into the questions. All right. So Jennifer's up first, and she writes in, Hi, I listen to your podcast every day. You are incredible. Listening to your show, 845 today, and it was the best show. I'm going to re-listen right now. Can you please discuss the last 5 to 10 pounds in inflammation again more in depth? The inflammation must be why I feel better when I go away on vacation and I can do my normal workouts, and my body feels lighter, and I see less fat and water on my thighs. Is this possible? Thank you so much, Jennifer. All right, Jennifer, for everyone that doesn't know, episode 845, I enjoyed that show as well. That was a podcast called What No One Tells You About Losing Weight. And the basis for that was actually the questions I got asked by the Skinny Confidential, which is another podcast, amazing podcast as well. Lauren and Michael do a great job over there. And that became the basis for another podcast. And this was a very popular podcast, 845. So if you haven't checked out that episode, it's just what no one tells you about losing weight, episode 845. Okay. And again, all these podcasts are at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. All 939. Today is 939. stephencabral.com forward slash 939 will be today's show. So 
you can go back and listen to that podcast about how to lose 50 to 100 pounds, 10 to 50 pounds, and then that last 10 pounds. So what Jennifer's talking about right now is why so many people have difficulty losing the last 5 to 10 pounds. And the reason is because of food sensitivities, higher cortisol, and non-balanced estrogen progesterone based ratio and levels. So the reason what Jennifer's talking about, and Jennifer, I'll do a show on the last 5 to 10 pounds. I can do that specifically, and I'm happy to do that. I think that's a great idea. So I'm actually going to put it in my notes last now, the last 5 pounds. Okay, losing the last 5 pounds is what we'll call it. Losing the last... Sorry, I know how painful it is to listen to me type since it's so slow. But losing the last 5 pounds. So the reason for you, though, is if you go away on vacation... And all of a sudden, you lose weight without even trying and you look less inflamed. Well, it's because of the stress of everyday life. You know, a lot of times on vacation, you're not even eating as well, but sometimes you look leaner. All right, part of that, no doubt about it, is the sun. The sun and getting a tan and getting out there absolutely helps your body to detoxify, regulate all of those great things. But on vacation, a lot of times you're sleeping a little bit more. Stress levels are lower. If stress levels are lower, well, so is cortisol. If cortisol is lower, most likely estrogen dominance will be less. So that is the reason, Jennifer. And so your job then is to take as much of vacation. I know it's not easy, but but take as much as vacation with you back to the real world, in quotation marks, we'll call it, as possible. All right. So that's your goal. And probably a product such as full spectrum magnesium, maybe one at lunch, two at dinner, and then adrenal soothe, probably the same, one at lunch and two at dinner is going to be great for you in order to start to reduce stress in your life. Okay, let's move on. Anne-Marie, I heard you speak in the Skinny Confidential. We were just talking about that. And I was very intrigued. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder several years ago, and lately my stress and anxiety has been out of control. I'm exhausted all the time, and I'm miserable. I'm taking medication, and I do see a psychiatrist, but I don't think it is enough or working. I am looking for anything. I'm open to anything. Please help. Thank you, Annie. Okay, so... Andy, we work with bipolar all of the time. I want you to look at several things, okay? I would be remiss if I would ever try to help anyone with bipolar just you know, by giving them a simple answer. There's not a simple answer. Keep in mind, if you've been sick now for a couple of years, I've talked about this before. I always talk about it on the Mindset Motivation Mondays, and I talked about it, hopefully you checked out, this past Monday, which was 9.34 how to become more resilient in the face of adversity. A lot of people in my practice have been sick for years, sometimes decades. If you're looking for that one thing, that silver bullet, it's not going to be there. You're going to set yourself up for failure and you're going to set yourself up to be overwhelmed and feel like a failure, which you're not. So Anne-Marie, I know that you're not looking for that, but I just want to put that out there to the community. What we need to do, Anne-Marie, is really, if you could run the big five labs, I know that there's an investment with that and I always say that, but it's so important. I mean, it really is because your bipolar could be linked to a copper toxicity. It could be linked to heavy metals such as mercury or aluminum. It could be linked to lower thyroid. It could be lower vitamin D. It could be higher levels of omega-6 than omega-3. It could be candida overgrowth or bacterial overgrowth in the gut. There can be so many things going on is what I'm saying. Now, those big five lab tests tell you what those issues are. They tell you the underlying root causes, not the dis-ease of the body, but the actual imbalances causing this disease-based process. So that's my recommendation. If I had to give you an order of importance, I would run this. I would run the thyroid adrenal hormone test, then the organic acids test, then the hair tissue mineral analysis, then the omega-3 test, and then the food sensitivity test. That's what I would do in that order. So if you can only afford some, not, not a problem. Totally understand that. And that's my order of importance for you. All right, Emily's up next. Hi, a couple of questions regarding your products and services. Will the food sensitivity test indicate candida overgrowth and lectin sensitivity? Does your candida protocol include a guide food list in addition to the supplements? Thank you. Emily, so let's talk about the food sensitivity test first. It will show you your IgG response for candida in your body. So it will look at your immunoglobulin G, which is an immune-based cell that goes after a latent-based response to any food sensitivities, or 94 that we test for, as well as candida. So the interesting thing is that I mean, this is not magic at all. All we're doing is we're putting a couple drops of blood on a card. We're milling it into the lab. The lab is then taking that blood and putting it into 94 different uh, vials, essentially, and testing your reaction to certain proteins and foods. Okay. 
So that's what we look at. And and it's very, very helpful. It's amazingly helpful, especially for those people that don't want to believe that they could be sensitive to a dairy or a gluten or an egg or whatever, right? And it's just, it's great to do. Okay. The reason I recommend it so highly is that when I did it before, once I was well and like 90% there, you know, it wasn't all the way there. And I was like, oh, well, what else is going on? And I tested it because I didn't have any bloating anymore at that point. But I was sensitive to almonds and I was sensitive to chicken and I was sensitive to kidney beans. I was sensitive to green beans and a couple other random things that I ate quite often. So then that allowed me to remove those. And again, I got a nice drop in inflammation. I actually felt lighter. I felt better. It was, it was excellent. It was really, really great. So the food sensitivity test can't recommend it enough. But then it tests candida albicans. Now, candida albicans is not a food. It's a living part of your body. But when it overgrows, there will certainly be immune response. Okay, so it does test for that. Lectin sensitivity is a tough one. Not a great test out there right now for lectin sensitivity that I would consider a high performer, meaning like going to give you the clinical results you want. However, there's two things you can do. One is you can start to look. I look for, well, I look for patterns. And if I start to see quite a bit of beans and quite a high number of vegetables on your food sensitivity test that tested higher, then I can say, okay, you might be someone that's more sensitive to lectins. But the other thing is you can also run, there's many different ones to run, IgA and IgE for lectins. And it just, they're not as high performance. The easy thing is this, is that, and I don't think people need to be afraid of lectins. I think that there's a lot of marketing hype around it. I've already given you my take on lectin sensitivity before. I really have. And so just go to seamcabal.com forward slash podcast, type in lectin, L-E-C-T-I-N. You'll get my full take. Once you clean up your gut, once you balance your gut, most people can handle lectins just fine. It's the total load. It's the rain barrel effect at work again. So I'm fine with lectins to a certain point. Now, if you're someone who's more prone to allergies or asthma or like skin rashes or any type of histamine-based production headaches, you're probably not going to want a high lectin diet in general, right? But the easier thing is that we can cook our foods and we don't have to eat as much beans and nuts if we don't want to. I don't eat a lot of beans. I don't eat a lot of nuts. I know that in excessive amounts, it gives me an issue. But if I go out, could I have some beans? Absolutely. Do I have hummus sometimes? Absolutely. Do I have high lectin vegetables and fruit sometimes? Absolutely. Like There's not an issue because I got rid of my SIBO. I got rid of the IBS. I got rid of the candida. They're gone. And so I don't have lectin sensitivity because I repaired my gut. I also don't have the allergies because I repaired my gut. So all of those are uh, important to look at. And then yes, our candida and bacterial protocol, one of the best things about getting the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol that we use is that it gives you my sensitive gut guide, which is the exact foods of what to eat, not to feed candida, because you can actually eat fruit. A lot of people don't know that. It's a specific list. So we give you that same with vegetables and same with starches. And then we tell you how to introduce the food, the new foods to challenge your body after three to four weeks, and then after six weeks, and then after eight weeks, and then after 12 weeks, introducing any food that you want. So we walk you through that with the candida and vegetable overgrowth protocol. Again, just an aside, that is still $100 off for the next month or so before we eventually do have to raise the price. We've been literally for three years now, almost three years, two and a half years, giving that away at such a low, low cost for nine nutritional supplements. It's a good deal. We'll put it that way. Margaret's up next. Margaret's writing in, Hi, Dr. Paul. Love your show. I searched your podcast and couldn't find anything regarding the HCG diet and your honest take on it. My friend actually works with a nurse practitioner in New Jersey who offers the protocol via injections and says the results are great. I see many chiropractor offices and NP offer HCG, HCG under supervision, but it seems unhealthy to me. My friend is convinced it's a miracle. I trust your advice. All right, Margaret, happy to give you my opinion on this. The HCG diet is something that I've spoken about before on a previous house call, but it's been a long time since I've spoken on it. So for those of you who don't know what the HCG diet is, it stands for human chorionic gonadotropin, and it's a hormone that they actually inject into people, mainly women, but sometimes men, to help them lose weight. But that's not the part of the weight loss diet. I want to go over this fully. So human chorionic gonadotropin is a hormone actually produced by the body itself during pregnancy. And typically, this is used only for fertility-based, to treat fertility-based issues. But a few medical doctors or nurse practitioners like you just spoke about are using it for weight loss. The problem is this. I'm not a big advocate of the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, but even the FDA 
this is a medical-based treatment. Even the FDA has told consumers to stay away from the HCG diet, okay? And here's why. It's been shown to increase androgens in the body, which can allow for certain types of cancer, such as breast cancer or prostate cancer. It has also been shown to potentially cause gynecomastia in men, which is the growth of breast tissue in men. Also, uh, common complaints of the HCG diet are fatigue, depression, retention of water, irregular heart rate, restlessness, some insomnia. But I'll tell you something else. A lot of the times, the reason why so many people love it is they're getting these hormone-based injections. And yes, if it raises androgens, then it's also going to help burn more body fat and put on more muscle. So anabolic steroids does the same thing to an even greater level. And yes, they work. There's no doubt about it. But again, do you want to trade the potential hair loss on your head to grow hair on your back or your body, as well as potentially cancer? My answer would be no. Like, There's no amount of muscle that anyone should want to put on or body fat to lose, then the trade-off could be potentially cancer. And who knows who's going to get it, right? It's like, it's just plain Russian roulette. You don't know if your body's going to react to it in a way and allow for the metastasis of cancer cells. My other thing is this, is that on the HCG diet, no one ever tells you, you also are typically only eating 600 to 800 calories per day, right? If you only eat 600 to 800 calories per day, yes, you're going to lose weight, at least in the short term. It's like keto in the short term can work great. You're going to drop a lot of water. You're going to lose some weight. But in the long term, not the best for your hormones, right? How are you going to recover? Like eventually, are you going to do the, are you going to use human chorionic gonadotropin for the rest of your life? That's what I always ask people. Like, what's the end game here? Everyone's thinking short term. And Margaret, I know that you're not, but you're like your friends. They're all thinking short term. Okay, I'm going to take this. I'm going to lose weight. But then what? Your body's going to rebound most likely if you never fix the underlying root cause of why you couldn't lose weight in the first place. So I would go back to the episode that we were just talking about earlier, 845, when no one ever tells you about losing weight. I would check that out. I would share it with your friends because your body will rebound. If you come off anabolic steroids, I've seen this happen to my friends. They lose a lot of their muscles, but they also get depressed. They get lower mood. They lose their libido. They sometimes get erectile dysfunction. And the reason they do is because their body was surging with testosterone before, and now you cut it off. Well, what about hap- what happens now when you shut off HCG? So that's why the medical community, conventional medicine, nurse practitioners, medical doctors, I'm shocked that a chiropractor allows this. But you know, some do, that it's more conventional medicine. It's all short-term thinking. How do we burn it? How do we cut it out of the body? Or how do we poison the body in order to somehow get it better, right? No, all we're doing is trying to put a Band-Aid over symptoms. That's it. And I have so many nurse practitioners that are going to be to be joining our upcoming certification. So I don't want to talk negatively about nurse practitioners. My sister's a nurse practitioner. So I don't mean that at all. There's so many nurse practitioners doing amazing work. But what I'm talking about is of a nurse practitioner or an MD, because there's so many amazing MDs as well. And there'll be a lot of amazing MDs in the upcoming certification. A lot of them are my own private wellness clients now. But you know, here's the deal. You can either believe in natural-based protocols, or you can believe in conventional medicine, which is the burn cut poison. Like that's the truth. Those are the treatments. Like how do we medicate it? How do we put how do we mask the symptoms? Because if you're masking symptoms, you are never going to help people get well. There's no chance. Like you can't help someone get well. If they have high cholesterol and you put someone on a statin, what are you doing? You're just lowering the production of cholesterol. But what about all the reasons of why the body was producing more cholesterol in the first place? You never fix those. Like you just didn't fix it. High blood pressure, same exact thing. You didn't fix the electrolyte imbalances. You didn't fix any of the high cortisol. You didn't fix those things. If you put someone on a beta blocker or calcium channel blocker or any number of things, the diuretic, if you have high blood pressure. So work with, a, with your local functional medicine practitioner, run a lab through equilibriumnutrition.com and get my advice or work in our private practice. You can work with anyone you want, but you have to work in the underlying root causes. That's it. There's no other answer. Like there is no other answer. I mean, believe me, look at someone that spent a half a decade trying to work with conventional medicine, kind of going back and forth after a couple of years with natural medicine, still trying to use some pharmaceuticals. It never worked. Let me just do a one minute rant here. When I started taking Cortef when I had Addison's disease, and when I started taking, I believe it's called Flornef, it's for my low blood pressure with POTS, they worked, okay? I felt fantastic. Guess what? Started reading the literature. People who take those products 
specifically Cortef, oftentimes die at a younger age. Well, I didn't really want that, right? I didn't really want to be artificially putting those pharmaceuticals in my body. So as hard as it was, I weaned myself off of that and then set along the much more difficult journey. And it is more difficult, right? Because you could just medicate yourself. But I wanted to do it the right way. I wanted to rebalance my body. Doctor said I couldn't do it. But you tell me I can't do something. <laughs> you know, That's a challenge to me. That is a challenge to me. And I hope it's a challenge to you because you can lose the weight and you can get well and you can really age very gracefully. And that means in your 70s and 80s, I don't want you in a nursing home. I don't want you having to be you know, worried about falling, all those things. I want your body strong. And I believe this. And the reason I believe it is because I saw it happen with me and then I saw it happen when I was overseas in many different practices. It wasn't just you know, a practice that you know, I was seeking out because they were the best. I saw it in many different practices, and I've seen it in my own practice now for many, many years. So I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it, but I would simply tell you this. I don't believe that putting hormones into your body for long-term use is a good idea. If you want to say, well, I want to do it for medication or hormones for 12 to 16 weeks, I can potentially get behind you on that. What I can't get you behind is, is on long-term use of exogenous-based hormones, meaning from outside the body, you're putting them in. Because your body, it should be producing them on its own. And again, when we talk about menopause, I've, I've spoken about that before and the natural-based substances we can use. And you can even tune in to this past Tuesday's show, 935 on the four foods that balance female hormones. So Margaret, highest recommendation is that you do this. You run the thyroid adrenal hormone test. It's also called the weight loss test. It will tell you why your body's not able to lose the weight in the best way possible. That's where I would start. All right, Sal's up next. Sal's asking, my 10-year-old daughter has been dealing with chronic idiopathic urticaria with dermatographia. It came out of nowhere and is now taking daily meds for this. I loathe the idi idiopathic reasoning. There must be an instigator, yet all blood work comes back negative. What can you please recommend for my baby? Sal, I'm you know, very sorry to hear this. You know, I always feel for when I see these kids coming in with issues and you know, I've seen full body psoriasis and the, the hives that you're talking about right now and dermatographia. I've had all of these myself. Okay, I had them all the way up until my mid-20s, mid to maybe late 20s, around 27. Again, when I met my, I call them my final mentor, meaning like the person that I said, you did it, you know, like you figured it out. You, you showed me what to study next. Now, when I say mentor, I don't want people to get lost in this, meaning that, you know, I do some mentorship on my own. And of course, the certification coming up is meant to be a mentorship for thousands of other health practitioners that will spread these protocols and knowledge, you know, throughout the world that I've accumulated that is not mine to keep and hold on to. And that's why, you know, the book, The Rain Barrel Effect, I put everything in there that I do and all profits go to charity. And that's because I believe that that's the right thing to do is just teach what you've been so fortunate to learn yourself. But when I say final mentor, I mean that she didn't sit down with me every day and tutor me. Like that wasn't it. I met with her probably four or five times. Okay. We conversed a couple times through email. What she did was open my eyes. She pulled things together for me. I read her book before I initially contacted her. So that's what I mean by my mentor. She didn't do the work for me. I think that can sometimes be confusing. And it was probably, let's say, 10 hours of tutelage, right? So it's, it's not like it's, it was a long, long time. But what she did was I was already studying a little bit of Ayurvedic medicine. And that's obviously how I found her in the first place, right? Because I started studying Ayurveda. And then I found her book. And then I contacted her. And, and so she brought together, though, functional medicine, naturopathic medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and the state-of-the-art lab testing, basically the subclinical labs that I do today. And then the last piece she added was the genetics. She just let me know that because of my family history as well, I was most likely going to be more deficient in detox pathways as well as methylation. And because of that, I then had my starting point. So the Cabral House Call is meant to be a starting point, not an ending point, meant to be a starting point to get your question answered. So that's what she did for me. She got me started. She didn't do the work for me, but she pointed me in the right direction. And of course, for that, you know, I'll be forever grateful because that's all we need. Like we need a starting point. And then from there, we learn something, we try it, and we get better. At least we get results. We get better or worse or neutral. 
And if we get worse, well, that tells us something as well. And then you move on to the next thing. There's no silver bullet. Even with my mentor, there wasn't a silver bullet. But she introduced me to things I had never been introduced before. And then guess what? I went back to school. She gave me the confidence in myself to go back and get my doctoral degree in naturopathy. And I did that. And then after that, you know, she didn't say study overseas. I just have an obsessive personality. So I said, I'm going overseas. Like, that's it. Like, I'm going to learn what isn't taught in the United States. And I went over there. And so that's that. And, and I just wanted to make that clear because I know that um, a lot of times, you know, we're always looking to the one person. And so I want you to work with a health practitioner or a team or whatever it might be. But what I don't want you to think is that that is just going to be like the full thing right away is you're going to have to work the process. But the nice thing is by working the process, you will get well. You will lose the weight. But along the way, even more important, you're going to find out a lot about yourself. You're going to become more self-confident and you're going to be a stronger person. You really are. It's not about whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's not about that. It's about becoming stronger because you have a greater belief in yourself and your willpower becomes strengthened as well. You become stronger in that way. Sal, I know this was a long, uh, you know, around the um, Mulberry Bush pattern here that we took, but I've already spoken about urticaria and dermatographia quite often. So you can go back to stephencrabal.com forward slash podcast, type in urticaria, also type in hives, but at least let me get you started. So the way that a lot of people in our practice get better from this is they fix the leaky gut. They fix the intestinal permeability. So absolutely run an organic acids test. The other thing I would most likely do is run the hair tissue mineral analysis to make sure that there isn't higher levels of copper versus zinc because low levels of zinc would be indicated by a higher level of copper. So that can help tremendously. Also, omega-6 to omega-3 levels, lack of omega-3s absolutely can lead to hives and urticaria as well. So if I were to run three labs for your daughter, well, four labs, technically, it would be organic acids test, hair tissue mineral analysis, then the omega-3 test, and then the food sensitivity test. However, if you can't afford those four, totally understand, and I get it. What I would do is run the starter kit, which is already discounted $100, the organic acids test and the hair tissue mineral analysis, then have your daughter begin taking some omega-3s. We have a liquid omega-3 that I would recommend for your daughter, just a half a teaspoon to start, then she can work her way up a little bit more if she wants to a full teaspoon. And then that would take care of the omega-3. And then for the food sensitivity is when you run the organic acids test and hair tissue mineral analysis, just ask our team for that sensitive gut guide, whether your daughter needs it or not based on the organic acid test results. Hopefully this was helpful. And um, again, Sal, you'll get more of your answers in depth by just going back and searching, but this will give you the place to start because there's obviously some type of histamine and mast cell-based production. You can even start on the HisPro and the Allergy protocol right away if you'd like as well. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Really appreciate it. I can answer these questions all day, but I will. I'm going to come back tomorrow. I'm going to answer more questions. Hopefully I get through another five to 10 questions or so. Thank you so much. Hope you have an amazing weekend. Talk with you soon. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable, and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.